Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. It's been a long time since I've been on Instagram Live, but we're going to go ahead and give it a shot again. And we're gonna lead in with very something special here. Knob Creek, 18 year, 30th anniversary, right? <clears throat> so if you haven't seen this already, you should have seen it in one way or the other, whether it's from their standard flagship Knob Creek nine year, you might have seen their 12 year uh, at some point, and then maybe you were fortunate enough to see their 15 year. All right, so a little bit of flex there. We got the nine, the 12, and the 15, and the 18 on the table. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna compare Knob Creek 18 against its really only other contender, Elijah Craig, single barrel, mind you, but another 18 year. But we'll more of that later. First, we're gonna do is just talk a little bit about Knob Creek and Knob Creek 18 year. So Knob Creek 18 is a limited edition release and is the oldest Knob Creek, as we can see on the table uh, to date. It's double, obviously basic math, from their flagship nine-year offering. Uh, according to this press release, quote, three decades ago, Booker No, grandson, grandson of Jim Beam and sixth generation master distiller, set out to define the standards of pre-prohibition style bourbon and introduce Knob Creek. This release is a celebratory milestone uh, since its first debuted in 1992, uh, i.e. 30 years ago. Uh, as we celebrate the 30 years of Knob Creek, it's clear to me dad was ahead of his time in creating innovative expressions with big, bold flavors and that define pre-prohibition whiskey, said Fred No, Booker No's son with, and seventh generation master distiller. This new 18-year-old liquid is a nod to his vision and commitment to quality and craftsmanship, and I know this is a whiskey he'd be proud to serve. I'm honored to further his legacy with Knob Creek's oldest and boldest expression yet. All right, so although Knob Creek did debut technically in 1992 uh, from Jim Beam, it's actually the brand's name goes uh, further back, uh, dated back than that. According to Kathleen D. Benedetto, Director of Global Brand Education at Beam Suntory, the KC label was first used in 1898. It was owned by the time at Penn Maryland Corp, a division of National Distillers. And as we know, Jim Beam purchased National Distillers in 1987, so it sat sort of not used until 1992 when uh, Booker No introduced it as part of the small batch collection, which at the time included four others. That's the namesake Booker's. It's three to four times per year. Their high end release at Jim Beam, if you will, uh, six to eight years usually blended together. So for those that might not be familiar, small batch essentially is a bunch of single barrel bourbons, right? You have a 53 gallon usually barrel of, of, of bourbon they take a couple of those, anywhere from two to more. There's no actual defined regulatory guidance that defines uh, a small batch other than what's relative to the size of the distillery. Um, but anything over two to however many could be defined as a small batch. <clears throat> and those are usually blended together at the discretion of the master distiller, master taster, the team there to uh, develop some sort of brand consistency. Um, but also what happens is you might have a single barrel that's wildly you know spicy or sweet or whatever maybe a bit tannic but when blended together it makes sort of a, a better expression uh as a whole and again go with that brand consistency like they want to have knob creek taste like knob creek taste like knob creek right that gets more so when you get in a large batch when you think about something like maybe jim bean black label right that's a large batch it might be 200 barrels mixed together uh, again a relative definition um, but Booker knows important, uh, not only for the Jim Beam, uh, company and distillery, but in the small batch movement, he's really what's known as quote, father of the small batch movement. Um, and so those, the expressions, Booker's Basil Hayden's is another one. It's, it's synonymous and, and infamous in the, in the bourbon community as the, you know, uh, entry level bourbon at 80 proof. It's very approachable, very mellow. It's a session for those beer drinkers out there. Uh, you could kind of drink on all day and, you know, not, not be too worried about, <clears throat> unlike Booker's, it's 120 plus proof. Um, and then that used to include Baker's as well. Baker's has now moved to be a single, single uh, barrel expression uh, meant to honor that namesake a little bit more, quote unquote, from the, from the Jim Beam uh, company. But now we have Knob Creek, which is, again, a nod to the pre-prohibition uh, era, although that's probably not true uh, from every research that I found. Pre-prohibition and further back whiskey is not not so good. Um, and, and in the good way that we've moved forward from that, but a nod in, in some ways, I guess, uh, to pre-prohibition liquid. 
So since those three decades that 1992 rolled around and Knob Creek came out, uh, Knob Creek's seen a bunch of different things to include not a bourbon, like a rye. They have a straight rye. They have a bunch of flavored whiskeys, special cask finishes. They even had a single, ba uh, single ca uh, barrel uh, expression as well, which is kind of funny considering everything we just talked about. Um, but sad to say in 2016, the nine-year expression saw the age statement go away for a while, a uh, spell until about 2019. Uh, when it did come back, that was due to some inventory concerns. Um, but that when it did come back out back in 2019, it came alongside uh, a statement that said, hey, we're going to release some older stuff. Uh, that included at the time a, a limited release, a 12-year, which a year later in 2020, we saw that become a permanent expression. Thankfully, it's phenomenal. I did do a blind between 9, 12, 15. And I'm, 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 uh, I like the older stuff and the 12 even one. <clears throat> so uh, the 15 came alongside uh, in 2020 and it was, um, uh, and it still is a limited expression. And then two years later, boom, 30th anniversary, they're uh, 18 years. So we saw three years, three years, three years, three years. So hopefully we'll see a 21 year, maybe if we're lucky in the future. But until then, we are going to be sampling the Knob Creek 30th anniversary, and of those, uh, again, one last little plug here for Knob Creek. Uh, the mash bill uh, is suspected 75% uh, corn, 13% rind, 12% malted barley, and that should be true for all these at 100 proof. That's sort of the brand thing, and again, there is some one-offs, like they have 100, 120 proof uh, release, but their, their basic offerings, 9, 12, 15, all, and 18, all 100 proof. All right, <clears throat> that was a lot. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is slide these guys over. And maybe we'll do a blind between them, but, but but really the age statement, you know, that's a great blind flight to do to showcase what bourbon does when everything else is the same but age. Um, but what I'd like to do now is sort of a side by side. I don't know what's underneath one of these cards, but I know that one of them is not Creek 18, one of them is Elijah Craig 18. And I'll just uh, move that like this, I guess, and move these in. I don't have much space. I'm working on my phone here, <clears throat> but goodness, we'll start with the left glass. No surprise, there's some oak on the nose. Vanillas, caramels, your classic bourbon stuff. Nothing really crazy going on. And I know for me, I'm a, I actually like Elijah Craig 18. It's a single barrel offering from Heaven Hill. It's known in the community as something you love or hate. Um, it's very simple profile. It doesn't get really complex like some of the older, like, you know, some of the stuff like the 2025s that you might find. Pappy 23 has got some nice complexities on it. Again, very mature, earthy tone notes, but you know, I, I don't find that to be true on some, uh, on, on either one of these, but maybe today's different. Yep. So right up front, you got that Oak on the front, almost like, yeah, and it sounds kind of gross maybe, but like you get a pencil, you know, you like maybe you, you touch the tip of a pencil in, uh, on your tongue and it's got that sort of tannic lead bit, but in a good way, if that makes sense. You got definitely some of that fresh oak, but not young oak, just fresh oak. Moving to glass two. This one, glass two has got more of your sweeter caramel type notes to it that the glass one, which I'm gonna go on a limb, I'm guessing this is Elijah Craig 18. Glass one, I'm gonna guess is Elijah Craig 18. That's what I'm guessing. Um, due to what I remember about it. Now, single barrels, they can vary, you know, barrel to barrel, but they've done a pretty good job of staying consistent for the brand. But the glass two has definitely got some more complex, you know, sweeter notes going on that the oak is maybe second to. But it's back there. That oak is definitely back there. It's like a fresh breath of that same sort of stuff that was going on for the oak, like that pencil-y kind of thing uh, on glass one. Maybe it's a touch tannic too, but. Some more that, you know, maybe corn's coming out on the, on the glass one. Not grainy, but just sort of in, in the sweet flavor notes. I think I like the sweeter notes accompanied a sort of a better balance kind of thing going on in glass two than I do glass one. I'm going to keep this video short. I might feel differently tomorrow about these two, but I'm going to go ahead and just rule, rule them now as glass two is my favorite, glass one's my second favorite. And then 
whatever Knob Creek ends up being, I'll go ahead and maybe try to dive into that more, but let's slide these over and do the reveal. So glass number two, or excuse me, glass number one, which is, sec uh, is second place, Elijah Craig 18. Guess when you drink like this, you just know. So that, you know, I don't know why I need to flip that. That's Knob Creek 18, unless somebody tried to trick me. So <clears throat> I will save this for later because that's fantastic. I'll put that aside, but I'm going to go ahead and spend a little bit more time diving into what won the blind flight of Knob Creek 18. And I think it was kind of simple, again, because the Elijah Craig 18 was a very simple pour uh, in, in terms of like complexities uh, as compared to, you know, the balance that I found immediately on the Knob Creek 18. But we'll, we'll, we'll dig this in. This is definitely a light to medium body. It definitely doesn't taste like 18. Like if you put this in a blind and were like, guess the age. I would have never in a million years guessed 18. I would guess 12, maybe. Um, at most, 10, 12, 13. Maybe you could have convinced me like 15 and I wouldn't have been like totally shocked. But you said 18, I would have been totally shocked. Um, the open brings some of that, you know, melt, uh, the sweet, there's a little bit of sweet cherry in there, that melted corn caramel, some of classic vanillas that, that carry all the way from the open through the mid. And you know what's really nice is just some brown sugar that starts on the mid but goes through the finish and it lingers on the finish alongside that oak. So again, it's a very sweeter pour than the Elijah Craig. Um... And I'll definitely will, will at some point do a blind between the 9, 12, and 15 because the 12 upset the 15 for sure. Um, I think it was an easy win. And I'm interested to see at least how, you know, the higher end of the spectrum because I, I don't think this will hold, that, that nine year won't hold a candle to it. But this is a good pour. Happy anniversary, Knob Creek. And to everyone out there, cheers and thanks for tuning in. Till next time.